It's time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. A cold front is producing strong winds, high elevation snows, coastal and valley rains, plus a surge of cold air across much of the U.S. A pre-Thanksgiving storm may bring areas of severe thunderstorms, gusty winds, heavy rain, and heavy snow stretching from the central to the eastern U.S. leading up to the holiday, and that's going to impact road travel. Closer to home, no hazardous weather is expected at this time, just sunshine this week, with the only chance for showers being today. We're going to have another look at the weather following this news. Last week, the Alamogordo School Board made a controversial decision. To offer a contract through December 31st, 2024, at the current rate to interim Superintendent Pam Renteria. I spoke with Pam Renteria about her feelings on the matter. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. I certainly recognize that and respect it. But I also think that, you know, I have proven dedication to the district. I also asked her if the board had not extended a contract to her, would she have departed? I would have stayed until someone removed me. I mean, I had I have no desire to go elsewhere. You can hear the full conversation on our YouTube channel. When the vote came about to determine if this contract would fly or die, there was one lone nay voice. I think this is a bad idea. For It's disrespectful to the oncoming board. That, of course, was Angela Cadwallader. I did reach out to speak with her over the weekend, and we did speak, although briefly. With regards to Superintendent Pam Renteria, Cadwallader said that she had no further comment. One thing I need to clarify is that I was under the impression that the contract was to expand the interim ship. Instead, I was corrected, and it is a full promotion to superintendent through December of 2024. This past Saturday, our friends at Kitty City NM held an adoption event at the mall. I spoke with Kathy Denton yesterday. We got 10 kitties and a half and half, so half for our kitties and fosters and then half for animal control, which is great. Ten adoptions is absolutely wonderful. There's no adoption event this week due to the holiday, but they will be out in December to be certain. We'll plan to be there on the 2nd and the 9th again. KittyCityNM.com for more information. The Alamogordo Chess Club weekly meetings are at Plateau Espresso every Monday from 4 until 7. I spoke with Matt Grinberg, and he says no matter your skill set, from top-notch master to a beginner, or even someone who just wants to learn, all are welcome. Anybody can can come. You know, anybody who uh, shows up regularly, I'm sure, would be happy to uh, help out the player who uh, wanted uh, to learn. It's casual chess. Pair up with whoever's available. There are no membership requirements or fees. Just show up with a board, set it up, and play. Saturday, the Alamogordo Toys for Tots will be having an event. We heard from Gina Lawrence. November 25th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Big Lot parking lot. I am going to have the Grinch, Santa Claus, and his elves out there. And we're going to have carnival games for the kids. Just a family-friendly, fun event. Alamogordo.nm.toysfortots.org has all the information you need. Toys for Tots is collecting toys now through December 20th. Please drop off new toys at any of the following drop-off locations. Tularosa Basin Regional Dispatch, Otero County Sheriff's Office, the Alamogordo Police Department, Otero County EOC, and the Otero County Administration Building. Help donate new toys to give children a better Christmas season. The annual Christmas parade is scheduled for December 9th at 6 p.m. The theme is going to be Cowboy Christmas, so we're kind of looking for like um, things like cowboy hats, you know, a float with horses. If you want to register, call 575-434-6770. Well, today's Monday. Let's get a pup date from Animal Village NM. Hi, this is Sunny Harris with Animal Village NM, and this week's update. You know... Whatever you think about how COVID started or whether you believe in vaccinations or you don't, one thing we have to all agree on, and that is that COVID-19 changed our lives forever. It closed down many, many businesses. It taught many businesses how to keep going but to streamline and how to do that. And a lot of people died. So with all of the losses, We have, those of us who have stayed in business, had to change the way we did business just to keep going and provide the services that we were committed to provide. 
Now, as hard as it's been for for for-profit businesses, and as many of them have closed, imagine how hard it is for a nonprofit to have survived. Many, many animal rescues, for example, have gone out of business. We lost three more this week in New Mexico. New Mexico, the state with the highest pet abandonment rate in America. So we need help more than anyone else in America, but we have less help than anyone in America. One thing that New Mexico has done is to require that out-of-state manufacturers of pet food who sell it here have to pay part of a tax to help with spay and neuter to reduce the problem. That means for those of you who are low-income pet guardians wanting to do the right thing, knowing that the right thing for your community, for your pet, and for your family is to spay or neuter your pet. It reduces the escape. It reduces aggression. It keeps them calmer. And you're not adding to the problem. You've become part of the solution for animals in New Mexico. And in the last year, Animal Village has been another big part of the solution. In fact, we started in 2007 with our PAW program. And since then, we have subsidized more than 10,000 spay and neuter surgeries in Otero and Lincoln County. This year, we've subsidized 201 already. Now, when you consider that one pair of breeding cats can produce three litters and 410,000 kittens in just seven years, and that we've done 10,000 surgeries, do the math. If I was good at math, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. (laughs) Anyway, we need your help. Giving Tuesday's coming up in less than two weeks. Please make a donation to Animal Village NM for your pet, for your community, and for New Mexico. Let's make a better New Mexico together. Donate now, animalvillagenm.org. News from around the state in just a moment. You're listening to Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Alamogordotownnews.com is a locally owned website featuring local news matters from a local perspective that affects you, and we bring it to you directly. Plus, local sports, cultural arts, and events. Online, alamogordotownnews.com. Owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. Directory Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. University of New Mexico students took to the streets calling for a ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas. The students gathered on the UNM campus, showing their support for the Palestinians in Gaza. Sarah Koplik, the director of UNM's Halil House, told KOAT that students are not just worried for Palestinians. It's a terrible tragedy for the region and for all people of conscience. But we also understand that there is, that Hamas is a terrorist organization and is standing in the way of peace. Protester Giselle Salgado had this to say. If I can't fly out to Palestine myself, I can be here and I can yell as loud as I can so that the university, who I also pay to, can at least listen to me as well. What the hell does she think the school's going to do about the war? Otero County Commissioner Amy Barella had a comment about the protests. I was following that on the news last week, and I'm astonished that people think that that is a right thing to protest. That is just further indoctrination of our schools and what they're being taught. And they obviously don't know anything about history or Christianity or anything like this or the purpose of this war. And if they would do their homework, then, you know, they would probably would not be conducting these protests as they're doing in these schools. And I think the schools need to combat what's going on. I don't want to dismiss anybody's First Amendment rights or anything like that, but I think it's based on a lack of education. The surge in support across this nation for Palestine and Hamas is disturbing. Do you remember seeing the celebrations in the Middle East following the 9-11 attacks? We the people were infuriated and ready to retaliate as a country. But with the changing times, would the young generation feel the same if it were to happen today? I kind of think that they would ask what we did to instigate the attack. The push to hire more law enforcement officers means a push for more money. Leaders from the New Mexico Department of Public Safety and the New Mexico State Police took the request to the Legislative Finance Committee 
They're requesting more than $14 million to make the New Mexico State Police Department the highest paid in the state, with a starting salary of around $80,000 per year. That's around a 15% pay increase. Former NMSP Chief Pete Cassettis says he's glad to see the administration fighting for the officers. He spoke with KOB. State police is a lot, the ranks are a lot harder to fill, especially with, you know, women uh, in law enforcement. The posts are isolated. They're um, rural at many times. Uh, and it's sometimes an impact because if you have a spouse, you get sent to a city that doesn't support the work they do. They may not be able to even work. If the budget is approved, the base pay would go up to around $38.48 per hour making the New Mexico State Police the highest paying law enforcement agency in the land of enchantment. Cassetta says it's worth it. What do you offer someone coming out of college after getting a four-year degree? Hey, sign up, become a police officer, we're going to strap a camera to you, record everything you do. By the way, um, you might get in a lot of trouble if you step outside the lines of what we train you, which does happen, right? And you could end up dead. That's terrible, right? But people like I had that calling. The budget proposal also suggests additional pay for officers based on their years of service. Can we retain those seasoned officers? That's hugely important. They're the ones that bring a lot of value to the agency, not just bringing in new bodies, but keeping the officers there that are dedicated, that know New Mexico, right, and are able to train and mentor these other officers. The budget presented to the committee will go before lawmakers during the upcoming legislative session. Sports and weather are next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, they just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. In volleyball, Melrose over Gateway Christian. The Melrose Buffaloes are the 2023 single-A state champions. Texaco over Tularosa making the Texaco Wolverines the 2023 2A state champions. St. Michael's over Santa Fe Indian, so the St. Mike's Horsemen are the 3A state champions. St. Pius over Albuquerque Academy, so St. Pius the 10th Sartons are the 4A state champions. And Las Cruces over Cibola, making the Las Cruces Bulldogs the 2023 5A state champions. In football, Roy Mascaro over Gateway Christian, 46-38. So the Longhorns are your 2023 six-man state champions. Melrose shut out Clayton 50-0. So the Buffaloes are the 2023 eight-man state champions. Texaco over Units 44-7. The Wolverines are your 2A state champions. This coming Saturday, St. Michael's faces Robertson for the 2023 3A state championship. Portales faces Lovington for the 4A state championship. Roswell faces Artesia for the 5A state championship. And Cleveland faces La Cueva for the 6A state championship. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies with a 20% chance of shower activity. Tonight, partly cloudy, winds gusting as high as 31 miles per hour. Sunny tomorrow, winds gusting as high as 18. Your high today in the basin, 59. Low tonight of 35. High tomorrow, 57 degrees. In Cloudcroft, mostly cloudy skies gradually becoming sunny. There's a 30% chance of rain and snow showers. New snow accumulation less than one half inch expected. Partly cloudy skies tonight and windy. Winds gusting as high as 37 miles per hour. Sunny tomorrow. Winds gusting as high as 31. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 38. Wind chill will make it feel like it's 8 degrees. Low tonight of 20. Wind chill will make it feel like it's 2 degrees. High tomorrow, 36. Wind chill will make it feel like it's 7 degrees. Bring in those pets, plants, and cover the pipes. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. Also, check out the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like, and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. That way you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin. We also welcome your comments at the bottom of the page. That concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.